Today we are going to be learning how to construct the width of a class interval. Now, looking at this group data of the ages of patients admitted to a hospital, we can clearly see that there are four groups or four classes. In any group frequency distribution like this, when we say the class width, we are referring to the difference between any class upper and lower boundaries. This is also referred to as class size or class length by different scholars. So we can say class width or class length or class size and we all mean the same thing. However, this is not the same as class interval, as the class interval is the difference between the lower and upper class limits. So for example, the following frequency distribution has a class width of 5 and a class interval of 4. Because if we take one class, say the second class, with an interval of 5 to 9 years, the class interval is the upper class limit, which is 9, minus the lower class limit, which is 5. So we have a class interval of 4. But for the class width, or class size, or class length, it is the difference between the upper and lower boundaries, right? The lower boundary of this class is 4.5, while the upper class boundary is 9.5. So 9.5 minus 4.5 will give us 5 all right so the class width is 5. you can check out the link popping up now if you want to learn more about the differences between class boundaries and class limits now with this out of the way how is the class width computed when all you have is the raw data let's look at this data with 25 ages to put this into a group frequency distribution we need to first know the number of classes or the number of groups and we can know that easily by applying the Sturgis formula I have made a separate video on how to use the Sturgis formula as a guide to determine the optimum number of groups when constructing a group frequency distribution you can find the video in the card above or in the description of this video for this data the number of groups that we desire is six groups. To know the width of each class, we can apply the simple formula, class width is equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value, all divided by the desired number of groups. To put this into statistical terminology, class width is denoted by I. The maximum minus the minimum is also known as the range and the number of classes is denoted by K. So we have I is equal to range over K super simple formula for this data our maximum value is let's look it's 19 and our minimum value is one all right awesome and our number of groups k is six so i is equal to 19 minus one divided by six and this will give us a class width of three all right so our first class will be one to three years the second will be four to six and so on. Now, there are some things to note here. The first thing is that this formula is just a guide and is not hard and fast, just like the Sturgis rule. Also, when grouping data, always make sure that each observation goes into one and only one class, i.e. these classes should be mutually exclusive. So we must make sure that the smallest and the largest values fall within this classification. And also we must make sure that none of the values can fall into possible gaps between successive classes. We must also make sure that the classes do not overlap, meaning that successive classes have no values in common. All right, so this is how to determine the width of a class when grouping numeric data. Now, here's a quick exercise for you. This is the data obtained from measuring the weights of patients in a diabetic clinic. All right, what is the width of the class in a group frequency distribution when we desire to have about five classes? Put your answers in the comment section below and please do not ignore this as this serves as a feedback for my work. And if you are new here and you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified for my subsequent videos when they drop. Also, like and share this video with your friends so as to help them in their academics and research. Check out my next video here to see the different types of class intervals or this other video here to know how to construct histograms using class intervals. And as always, thanks for watching.